If you've been to my channel before, you know that I use NOS often in my work, but even still there are times where it just doesn't suit the project. They can be eye-catching, or maybe the yarn is slippery and they come out too easily. So here are three of my favorite ways to join yarn without a knot that will give you a practically invisible join, and even better, no tails to weave in. To begin, let's start with the Russian join, which in my opinion is the most secure join. To do this, take the two yarn strands that you want to join together and cross them over each other. And then you're just going to take the tails and work them back into the yarn that they came from. You can do this with any type of yarn, cotton, acrylic, wool, as long as it has plies or strands of yarn that you can work into. So a chenille yarn, you wouldn't be able to do this method. Grab your favorite tapestry needle, the pointier the better. This is a plastic canvas needle by Boy, but you can use whatever you have on hand. I also like to use these little finishing needles. As long as there's a little bit of a point on there, that's really all you need. Grab your first tail. Just leave enough tail there so it doesn't come out of the eye of the needle as you're working. And just cross over the yarn, because you want to trap it as you're working on this. And now you're just going to feed that tail into itself. Let's go this way, make it a little easier for you to see. Just going through those fibers. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best you can. I'm really not fussy with this. I go about a half of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Just making sure to do the best that I can to catch some of those fibers. and then pull that tail through. Okay, repeat the process with the other tail and just work through those fibers. Again, not perfect. Just doing the best I can to get a few of those fibers, about half of an inch, and then just pull the yarn through. You'll have something that looks like this. And then just pull. And there's your join. And as you can see, that is not going to come out. And at this point, you can clip those ends and just carry on with your crochet project. And now for the second join called the needle join or the cheater's braided join. And I'm really not sure why it's called that because it seems way more similar to the Russian join. And that's because we're going to be feeding the ends into the yarn plies again, but this time instead of going in on itself, we're going into the opposite strands. So we're going to take this end and feed into this strand and this end and feed it into this strand. The benefit to this one is that it's a little bit quicker to do and it doesn't have that join area that you can see with the Russian join because they're going to feed seamlessly into each other. So to begin, add one of the ends to your tapestry needle. And again, you just need a little bit there so it doesn't fall out of the eye as you're working. Keep in mind, you're going to be using this tail to go into this strand of yarn. So you want to start your weaving with this one about two inches along. And again, just take your tapestry needle and work through those fibers. You don't have to get it perfectly in the middle here. You just want to intertwine those fibers a little bit. Okay. And then just pull the yarn through. That's one side done. and work the other side just the same way. And then just continue where you left off. So here we are, I'm just doing the same thing, working through those fibers. And again, you can do this with even a two ply. I have a wool two-ply fingering yarn that I do this with, and it works just fine. And you can see I'm just kind of skipping through. Pretty ugly, actually, but it gets the job done. 
If you're working with the same color, you're not going to see all of this. Okay, about an inch and pull it through. And now just pull Now, as you can see, that's not going anywhere. I did a pretty good job of joining those fibers together. But if you're working with a slippery yarn, if you pull too hard, it will slip out. So if that's an issue for you, then I would recommend that you do the Russian join or just make a nice long join like I did here. And for the final join, it's super easy. You're just going to twist and go. So let's just pretend that I've run out of yarn. So I've run out of yarn and I'm going to bring in some more yarn. I'm just going to twist these together and now I'm just going to continue on working. So just grab that tail in your hand. I was doing double crochets, so I'm just going to continue on with my double crochets. One and two. And as you can see, it already took that twist and then continue on as normal. And that's all there is to it. And I can take those extra tails now and snip them. Obviously the pro to this one is that it is very quick to do. The con for me though is that it is quite bulky with all of those strands of yarn. Plus I'm not convinced those little tails aren't going to pop out at some point. But this is a great option if you're working with a finer weight yarn or with something where the stitches will be camouflaged. So there you have it. Three knotless joins with no tails to weave in. Let me know which one is your favorite. I think this is mine. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, a like is always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.